good, what's good, what's good, fam? Queen Common Sense coming back to you again from the Shy Town remix to the Cackalacka Sticks. It's raining, it's pouring. And I was just snoring. I took a hard nap. I crashed out. But I'm back up again. I'm, you know, perusing around for some grub. And decided to hop on Instagram and TikTok and do some digging. And boy, oh boy, I came across something very interesting. Okay. Oh, the tangled web we weave when we practice to deceive, child. Now, honey, family, this is that boomerang that I've been talking about. You know, the universe. Mother Nature, Mother Earth, God, whoever, however you want to call that master creator, does not like ugly, okay? We came across, you know, a very well-known beauty influencer here on TikTok, and uh, she is a customer of canvas beauty okay now this isn't the same young lady who got blocked this is a different one who purchased some of the body glazes or products at canvas beauty and ran across problem okay and i'm gonna let her explain it for herself I couldn't find the original post about her concern and uh, issue here, but I think it is quite telling and, you know, eyebrow raising, that confirming eyebrow raising, like, hmm, you know what I mean? So here we go. Let's jump right into it, y'all. P. My bad. Let's turn it up. Give me a moment. Sorry about that, my loves. Let's get a little volume on here, shall we? Now we can crystal clearly hear this. Let us go. Let me rewind it. And bingo. Peep with me, y'all. Check this out. So it has come to my attention that somebody reposted what I posted on my Instagram story here on TikTok. So now we got to talk about it. I posted on my Instagram story that several of my Canvas Beauty body glazes were growing what appeared to me to be spores or like bacterial colonies. And the person that reposted it left out a lot of what I said on my story. So I want to be clear that I was not trying to be shady to Canvas Beauty. I was not trying to encourage people not to shop Canvas Beauty. I just want people to be aware of what I thought might be an issue with the shelf life. So I'm going to insert. Now, this is where I want to stop real quick because, you know, a lot of emotionalism gets in the way of what actually was said and what somebody heard. We've seen a lot of that throughout these here social media streets, whether it's concerning Love and Marriage Hunts Bill, Canvas Beauty, any of the other things that have been going on, swirling around all of the uh, here foolishness and uh buffoonery so let's be clear stating negative facts about any business or any person is not bashing that's reporting this is what i found it wasn't pleasant boom okay versus bashing inventing creating and adding to doubling down on said negative qualities that may or may not be true. My opinion of, you know, little Sally Saucer is that she is a liar, for example. I know that little Sally Saucer and I have never had a conversation, okay? But instead, I'm going to bash her because she said something maybe that didn't sit well with me in a previous conversation among a group of people. Or maybe I just have some type of insecurity or some type of character flaw to where 
little Sally Saucer really wasn't talking about me or directing anything to me in said group conversation, but hit dogs holler. And I, instead of checking myself before I wrecked myself, I jumped the gun, ran across the street to talk to Susie Homemaker about little Sally Saucer saying that she was bashing me during this group conversation. And we all know that that didn't, didn't happen because little Sally Saucer was with the same group conversation as I, but we did not really interact directly. Do, do you see the subtle shifts in how the narrative can get switched up and changed around and game of telephone turns into a, 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 a flaming hot mess straight out of hell? Let's go. These are pictures of what my canvas body glaze looked like. But like I said, to me, it appeared to be spores or bacterial colonies. Now, what I also said in my... Now, this, let's go back because that went quick. Let's go back to the picture. Okay. There we go. You, I'm not sure if you can see that. It's like a film type of growth over... The, the top of the uh, product. Okay. And I have purchased products that were allegedly gluten-free, vegan, and stuff like that, that have done this. And me, I'm a germaphobe. So I'm not going to scrape this shit off and, and, and try to use it. I'm going to chunk it and, and find another brand and write the company with my pictures or whatever. That's how I would do it now everybody different okay and I'm not saying she did right or wrong with this however let's just peep this out and she let this paint let peep peep let's rock this out let's cook watch this let her cook to me it appeared to be spores or bacterial colonies now what I also said in my Instagram story was that I own several of them I probably own between eight and ten of them I went crazy like everybody did when it was first really hitting the market I bought a bunch of them and then I kind of phased out the way you phase I like using products and I go back to them here and there I went back to one I saw the growths on the surface I scraped the top of it thinking that it was something that I did maybe I dripped water in it or something like that so I scraped the top of it set it to the side I went back to it about a month later and the little whatever on it was back. Picked up another one and saw that around the edges of one, it was also having the same thing happen. Now again, I want to be clear that my concern was probably at the- Did y'all see that? Let's go back to that second picture. Okay. She sat around the edges. You know, and for those of us who, not, who aren't familiar with how these uh, homeopathic, you know, organic products work, you have to have some type of preservative when you are uh, packaging, bottling, you know, these things so that they have a shelf life. Because some people, you know, don't don't have proper storage for certain things. You know, I was taught that if I make something homemade, such as a body glaze, a body butter, a face something, and it doesn't have preservatives in it to save it, when it's stored on a shelf in a drawer in the bathroom cabinet or your bathroom cosmetic drawer, you know, it's usually moist and warm in the bathroom unless we turn the air on. But usually that's where most moisture is. So if you're storing it in your bathroom, you need to store it in a cool, dry place if you can inside plastic totes, things of that nature. That's why they have so many plethora of storage ways to store your cosmetics properly. I put mine in the fridge if I don't have a proper way to store it. You know, that's just, that's just rule of thumb, you know, and people looking, why is there cosmetics in the fridge? I have a section with a, you know, container when I store things like that and it's labeled. This is non-food products. This is cosmetics. That's the proper way to store things in a refrigerator. Just like meat does not go on the top shelf. You're supposed to store meat inside of a glass container in the refrigerator if it's raw on the bottom shelf so it doesn't drip down and contaminate other things, the blood. But we're going to get back all out the weeds and check this picture out around the edges. Okay, let's go. Same thing happened. Now again, I want to be clear that my concern was probably that the shelf life is not that long on that product. From what I can tell, it seems to be like a very like raw organic product and those kind of products don't usually have preservatives in them and things that can help make them shelf stable for very long. And because I did buy so many of them, I don't go through them quick enough. So if it does have a shorter shelf life and that happens after so long, after them expiring, then maybe you shouldn't buy as many. And that's exactly what I said in my Instagram story. 
And see, a lot of times, you know, I do that too. I'll, I'll be like, oh, this, this works. I love it. This is something that I might, you know, this might become a household brand for, for moi because my entire tribe has very sensitive skin. So if I find something that really hits, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to rack up. Okay. I'm going, I'm going to load up with it because it's going to be utilized frequently by multiple people. So, you know, everybody get their own serving, if you will, right? They own, they own stash. This should last you X amount of weeks. So I'm by five per person. So this going to stretch it out for a whole two months before we make our order or, or do our haul again, right? You, you want to stretch it out and make sure you stay within the budget. We all know how it is, ladies, when you do it right, you got to have a beauty budget. Okay. Now, the things that I have stacked up on, you know, been very rare that I saw growth from sitting on the shelf, either unopened, used once, you know, or what have you. Okay. It should already have a sell by date and an expiration date on it per the CDC when you mass produce so-called paraben-free, uh, uh, homeopathic, organic products, even if they're non-organic, synthetic products. It should have a sell-by date and an expiration date on it. So let's go. So to be clear, I feel like this product is probably just one of those products that's going to have to develop as the company grows. We see this a lot with small businesses where they have a product, it's amazing, it blows up, and then when they start producing to the masses, they have to start considering things like the shelf life of it, the stability of the product, the science and chemistry behind the product. We saw this with the pink sauce lady. She had an amazing product, but it wasn't shelf stable. She went to a lab, now it's shelf stable. So I feel like this is something that Canvas Beauty is probably going to work on as they continue to grow. And I think in the meantime, what could be helpful is maybe care instructions, maybe cards, maybe something on the package that says the shelf life of the product. A lot of people have- Do you see that positive, constructive feedback from an experienced consumer of natural products? Experienced? That means you test them out and you pay attention to all of that to see if it truly is healthy and you should be putting it in or on your body, you know, and that is typically true because personally back in Chicago, I had my own, you know, side hustle of creating homeopathic balms, rubs, and uh, uh, butters as well. And it was like oh, very similar to how Melody feels. I was like the plug the underground plug and I only did word of mouth because that stuff it takes a lot to 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 uh, make batches of it single-handedly solo so I did batches of it and like I said my old school rule of thumb was when I before I sold them they were stored in their own separate refrigeration because I didn't have the means and the authority to use the preservatives that I needed to purchase to, you know, have a longer shelf life. And I've labeled it as such and included handwritten instructions to keep it fresh and uh, have it have it be effective. Because certain things, if they are beyond a certain time timeline, they're not effective. The mixture and the combination that you put together is no longer effective because it is expired. It has sat too long in a certain temperature, just like food. Okay, so let's 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 go. My concerns about how it was stored. I stored it in the cabinet with all my other body and skincare products, so I don't think it was stored in a particularly damp area. But I am in Texas. I also had a lot of people in my DMs after I posted that saying the same thing happened to their body glaze. So I do think that maybe the formula needs a little bit of work, and I think that's part of the growing pains. And I think we need to start giving small businesses, specifically black-owned businesses, the chance to experience their growing pains and receive constructive criticism. So let's be clear: I'm not hate on the black-owned business. Now that's, 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 there's that buzzword again, growing pains. Uh, growing pains are seeing where there's improvement needed, opportunities of improvement. That's customer service 102, areas of improvement. 
okay? That's a growing pain, not what we see happening with Canvas Beauty, where you flop, pretend like nothing happened, and then turn around and then front like you are back on top as if nothing happened. That's not a growing pain. That's delusional. I'm just here to tell you. So let's let's continue. We only got a little more or a small business i still want to see canvas beauty continue to grow and thrive i just think that maybe we should talk about these issues so that they have an opportunity to learn from them and the consumer can spend their dime wisely but i never intended for my video to bring any hate towards canvas beauty and i can tell by the comment section of that video that people were definitely being a little negative and weren't really giving the brand a whole lot of grace for kind of taking what i said and ran with that and i do have to hold myself accountable for the fact that i have a very large platform and i have to be careful about how i spread information if i really had that big of an issue with the product i could have just messaged canvas beauty directly and asked them about it so i do have to be accountable for the fact that i brought some negative light to a black owned business and that was never mine that's the word on the curb accountability baby see she she said well you know i probably did jump the gun before posting to my however many followers over a million i believe Let, let's let's peek let's peek up here i think she does have uh over a million followers we'll, we'll get to that later but but she clearly we see the views. We see the comments. 1,669 comments, 703 saves, 419 shares, 25,000 plus likes. Okay, so she clearly has a heavy, heavy social media following on TikTok here. Okay. Uh so I just I just, you know, accountability. She said, maybe I did jump the gun. Maybe I should have wrote a letter first. And then when I got my response, reported the results of my findings. And then the status of said uh, report, listen, they said they'd look into it and I'll update you. When I get the results back, I'll let you know. But this is what happened to me, the, the, the items that I purchased from this store. That's not bashing someone, right? She, she sees her error in her ways, emotionalism, right? We're emoting, oh, what is this in my product? Oh my God, I spent this money on this product. It's just been sitting on the shelf. I haven't really used much of it or if at all. And here we are, what is this? Okay, emotionalism. Gotta be careful, practice the pause. Let's go. So I do offer my sincerest apologies to Canvas Beauty for not being responsible with the platform that I have and showing the product in a negative light. And I do hope that Canvas Beauty continues to grow and thrive and that you guys continue to shop. And there you have it, folks. Y'all drop down in the comment section with them eagle feathers. Tell me what you think about this. All right, we're we going to talk about it. We're going to see what's going on with it, how y'all feel about it. Let's. I'm, I'm, I'm going to scroll down here and have a peek at some of the comments as well, okay? Because uh, they match with quite a bit of uh, what her, uh, you know, what what people have been saying overall. So, you know, one person said, uh, let's see. One person said, I realize people only want positive reviews, not real reviews like they claim 13 hours ago. Another person said, I don't know the first pick did look like spores to me. Shrug emoji. Another person says, I realized you had no ill intent. Shrug emoji. And someone else says, I can't believe people are coming for you. You shared your experience. Bingo. I love Canvas Beauty so much, another person says, and I appreciate this re re review because it lets me know to use all the products sooner than later. Thank you. You did nothing wrong, says another person. Companies need to stop being defensive and learn from feedback. Uh, they could never make me hate you, another person says. See, that's another thing we do as uh, we emote and let emotions drive our behavior and decisions. Okay, because someone says something negative about Stormy's attitude, her behavior, her, the way she's been moving. That doesn't mean that those people that make those comments, including myself, hate her, okay? I don't like the way she treats people that she thinks she doesn't need. 
okay? And then I know a lot of it is inherited traumatic behavior that's been passed down from her mother to her. See, that's something when you practice the pause and you have experience with certain things and you learn from your growing pains of reacting based on emotion versus responding based on logic, practicing the pause, you can differentiate and compartmentalize the two, okay? Now, another person says, the way you didn't have to explain anything, they'll be all right. And then another person says, well said, but I hate that you couldn't express your opinion and share your experience without backlash. Keep shining and growing. I love your content. All right. So there we have it. Beautiful family. All right. And uh, like I said, I might be back again with another one. And some more hot fire stuff that I saw. I might want to, you know, talk about that too. So we shall see, shall we? And uh, y'all, y'all let me know what you think over there in the comment section. Uh, who knows? I might throw this up as a premiere. I think that's what I might do. Okay, we could chat about it in the chat chat. But for right now, I'm a bounce and be out. One love, family. <laughs>